Hello, I'm Dave Sayer from Northumberland County Council's Trading Standards Service and today I'm going to answer your questions about anything that concerns you in this, Christmas, this run-up to Christmas shopping season. Holiday season is fast approaching and a lot of people will be worried this time of year about their rights, about things like what if their gifts are delivered late, what if somebody buys them a present that they don't like, what if something they bought online is unsafe, or is the transaction itself actually safe as well? The first question we've got, the first question is from someone who's bought a computer game online. They haven't bought a physical disc, it's just a game that they've bought the download for. And their concern is the fact that they've been playing this for a short while and they, they think it's been infected with a virus and now their laptop isn't working. So what are their rights? Well, a few years ago, the Consumer Rights Act came in and that introduced for the first time the, the idea that anybody who buys a digital content, as it's called in the Act, is entitled to have something that's of satisfactory quality. So if you bought a game, then first of all, you're entitled to a game that actually works. And secondly, it should be virus free and it shouldn't damage any of the equipment that you're playing the game on. So if you have got a problem with this game, then the first thing to do is get in touch with the person who sold it to you, the actual retailer, not the manufacturer whose name is on the packaging. Similarly, if you've bought the game using a credit card, then you may have rights under the Consumer Credit Act, and we'll probably be touching on those later on in the, uh, in the broadcast today. One of the other questions we've had is, about, is from someone who's bought some clothing online. It's actually a pair of trainers. When they've looked online, the trainers look exactly like a pair that they've seen in the shops. But now they've actually been delivered, they don't look similar to what they thought they were buying. And all of the um, address notes, all the invoices and delivery notes that have come with it are actually just in Chinese. So they don't understand what it is they've been sent. There's a very good website called getsafeonline.org. We'd always encourage someone who's new to uh, online shopping or who's bought something that's causing them concern is to go and have a look there first. This will give you information about the goods that you've bought and also how to protect yourself in future across a range of interactions that you might have online. So one of the things that you can look for is any, any information on the website that will tell you about where the customer is at, where the retailer is actually based. It's always a good practice to actually Google them and see if there are other complaints from other people who've bought from the website online and that should give you a, a good steer to avoid them. Make sure when you're buying goods online, you don't use an unsecure web, um, a Wi-Fi link because this is something that someone can actually tap into and take your credit card details. When you're buying something, then as I said before, always use your credit card because that will give you additional con um, protection if it's a purchase between £30 and £1,000. When you're buying something online, if it's a secure site, when you go to the payment page, then you should see at the top of the page, it should say HTTPS. That's an indication that it's a secure site and there should be a small padlock icon down in the bottom of it, uh, down on the bottom of the page that is. Make sure that when you've bought something, you get an email back straight away telling what you've bought. You should also get cancellation rights. These are rights that give you the opportunity to actually inspect the goods that you've bought after they've arrived and see whether or not they're what you ordered and that you're happy with them. If, they, if you've got any concerns, then you have a no fault right to return the goods to the seller. So make sure that when you're buying the goods and when they're delivered, these rights are actually explained to you. A lot of people will actually buy a few similar items and then pick the one they like and then send the, back, send the rest back. Really, this is to make online shopping a similar experience to what you'd have if you went along to a shop and you tried on clothes in the shop and decided which item suited you best and was the right size for you. When you've actually had the product delivered, as soon as your bank statement, so your credit card statement arrives, double check it to make sure that you've only been charged the amount that you actually expected to pay. 
uh, and that's another protection if you've got any concerns about it then contact your bank contact the company that you bought the goods from it's often best to use a secure payment system like PayPal because they have their own um, complaints procedure that will help you if you've got any concerns our next question next concerns question, late delivery concerns late delivery the question actually concerns someone who's ordered a sofa and at the time they put the order in the salesman guaranteed to her that the sofa would be delivered in time for Christmas she's now had a phone call from the company saying that they're not sure that it will actually be delivered before the uh, before the big day so our advice to you would, to, would be to make sure when you're actually buying something if it's a sofa or a television or some other large item then make sure that the delivery date is written onto the contract and that both you and the seller understand that it's very important that the sofa is actually delivered at that time this is called making time of the essence similarly if they come back to you later and say that the sofa or whatever other item it is isn't going to be with you in time then again point to them and say that the actual delivery date was a term of the contract and it's something that you expect them to fulfill if they still can't deliver before Christmas then you have the right to actually demand a refund and take your business somewhere else and see if you can find the item that you want delivering in time generally we find that companies do their absolute level best to get goods to you on time because it's very much part of their business and they don't want any reputational damage of word gets about that they're taking people's money but not actually delivering when people want their, want their goods delivered we know that it's a very very busy time of year we know that it is complicated to actually fulfill an order for something like a sofa because there are so many variables in terms of size and coverings and what have you but as I said before companies will do everything they can to actually make sure that the goods are delivered on time again this is one of those instances when it's often best to take uh, take your credit card and pay on the credit card even if you just pay the deposit on the credit card that will give you a right to cancel and you'll be able to demand a refund from your credit card issuer if you use a debit card for instance instead of a credit card you don't automatically get the same rights from the uh, the credit card or the debit card issuer but a lot of banks these days will actually give you the same rights so whilst you're not entitled to the same rights in law a lot of the banks will do what they can to make your shopping experience as comfortable as possible our next question our next question, question from a gentleman who bought a new gentleman. television in the sale in the christmas sales last year and he got a six month guarantee with it unfortunately it's now broken down at the time he bought the television one of the things that encouraged him to buy it was the fact that it was marked up as 800 pounds reduced from 1200 pounds he's been back to the shop and despite the fact it would cost him about 1200 pounds to replace the television with a similar model the shop will only offer him 800 pounds so he'd like to know what his rights are and what he can actually do well when you buy something whether it's in a sale or at any other time if it becomes faulty you're only entitled to the contract price and that's the price that you actually paid at the time you bought it so in this instance the gentleman would only be entitled to 800 pounds we do have issues with goods that you've owned for a reasonable length of time when people buy goods depending on what they actually are for a lot of goods you get much better rights in the first six months after you've actually bought it so if you've had a problem with this item in the first six months he'd be automatically entitled to a full refund and the assumption that the law makes is that if the item becomes faulty within six months then it was faulty at the time of sale even though the fault didn't become apparent until a little while later under those circumstances you'd be entitled to a refund of the full amount that you paid if you bought something else such as a car for instance then the seller might be entitled to actually take some of the um, the cash price off or reduce the, the amount of the refund to actually reflect the use that the cars had so if you look at for instance a car normally cars um, are expected to travel about 10 to 12,000 miles in a year so you've had it for a year then you may well find that the amount you get back is reduced by that amount 
shops are also entitled actually to offer you a, um, a repair in the first instance. And if the repair actually solves the problem, then that's the matter dealt with and both parties are happy. Often shops will actually stop the time on the warranty during the period that it's, it's being repaired and start it again at the time that it's repaired to you. It's always best to go back to the shop, ask them what they re they're willing to do and if they're willing to resolve the matter to your satisfaction, then you don't need to go to law on this. If the shop is not making you an offer that you're happy with, then the best thing for you to do in the first instance is to contact the Citizens Advice Consumer Service and they're on 03454040506. I'll go to the Citizens Advice website and click on the consumer button. If it's a problem that they think that Northumberland Trading Standards should be, dealt, be, should be dealing with, then they'll pass the information straight through to us. Someone last Christmas Someone received, received a present, present that they really, 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 didn't, didn't, really, like. really didn't like. The best thing to then, do, the best thing to do, is to go back to the shop. Now it may be that, now, it the, may person be that the person who bought it for person you, bought it for person you, who bought it for you, asked for a gift receipt or something similar before they uh, they paid for the item. If you got that, that's marvellous because it usually means that the shop are more than happy to do something for you. Sometimes they'll give you a credit a credit note. Very occasionally, they'll give you cash. It may be that the person who gave it to you wasn't entirely sure to start with, may be willing to give you the, uh, the proper receipt without the price on, or may even be willing to take the product back. As I say, although you haven't actually got any rights, it's always best to go back and ask the shop. Try not to take presents back during their really busy sale during the year, um, immediately after Christmas. And often shops put up signs saying, if you've got any returns, then please bring them back in the new year. So please try and honour that because the shop is really trying to help you. So if you don't think you'll offend the person who gave you the gift, ask for the receipt, go back to the shop, talk to them nicely because they may be willing to do something for you, which is more than you'd actually be entitled to in law. Our next question concerns a Blu-ray player that somebody bought last year. Unfortunately, it's become faulty only recently. They bought it in the sale, so it's now 10 or 11 months old. They've been back to the shop and they said that the six month warranty on the Blu-ray player has expired and they're not now willing to do anything. And the person who sent the question in asked a simple question, what can they do now? Well, first of all, your rights are against the retailer, not against the manufacturer. That's a very important point to remember because a lot of people automatically ring up the manufacturer or contact them by email in the expectation that they're the person that they should be complaining to. When in fact, you have a contract with a retailer, so that's the shop that actually sold the item to you. When you buy goods with a warranty, the warranty is usually something that's over and above the rights that the law gives to you. So the Consumer Rights Act 2015 gives you the rights that anything you do buy should be of satisfactory quality. And one of the things that makes up satisfactory quality is the fact that goods should, ask for, should last for a reasonable length of time. And what's a reasonable length of time varies from item to item. So something like a Blu-ray player that you may only use once or twice a week, you'd expect that to last for several years. Similarly, something like a washing machine or a fridge, again, you'd ask, expect them to last for a long time. <coughs> a pair of shoes that you've bought in the sale and you wear every day for work, well, it's reasonable to think that they will last you eight or nine months and if a hole develops after that time, then I'm afraid it's time to throw the shoes away and buy a new pair. The warranty, going back to the original question, the warranty will give you extra rights above and beyond what you're entitled to in law. So this may be an instant replacement or an instant refund. But if the warranty is expired, you're now relying on what the law actually gives you. And the warranty, ex the, the law expects that goods should last for a reasonable length of time. So I've said a Blu-ray player shouldn't have become faulty now. Take the item back to the shop. They may well offer you a, a, a repair in the first instance. And our advice is to accept that. 
because the res if the repair resolves the problem then everybody's happy it is reasonable for the shop to actually offer you a repair in the first instance and if the item couldn't be repaired to a refund because you've had the item for a reasonable length of time then the shop may actually reduce the the amount that they're offering you to less than you actually paid for it and this is to reflect the use that you've had from it and the length of time that you've actually owned the item so as we always recommend to customers if you've got a problem go back to the retailer in the first instance always be reasonable find somebody in authority to talk to about the problem because often people on the shop floor don't have the authority to actually make a decision to help you so you talk to someone like a shop manager and they will talk to you talk through your problem and tell you what they can actually do to try and help you resolve it uh, the lady who's written in says that she's bought plane tickets for her daughter for Christmas so that she can actually come home unfortunately the airline has now gone bust what do I do well obviously this is a very relevant question at the moment we've recently seen Monarch Airlines go bust and another airliner has had to uh, cancel an awful lot of uh, flights because of various internal management problems so if you're buying items like this it's always best to use your credit card so if the tickets are costing more than hundred pounds well less than three thousand pounds and I suspect these tickets will cost more than hundred pounds because they're flying somebody back from Canada then in those situations you're covered by the Consumer Credit Act 1974 section 75 of that act and it's always easy to remember section 75 excuse me that gives you rights um, against the person who issues the credit card so if you've got a, a, a visa credit card for instance then you will have rights against the visa credit card company that actually issued the card so although the company's gone bust you still have a right to recover even though you'll still have to try and book your daughter on a different airline what you should be doing then is if you've kept all of your receipts and all of your emails from the airline including the one that comes to you that says that um, the uh, airline has actually gone bust you need to copy all of those and send it to the customer service department at the credit card issuer send them all of the correspondence so they understand exactly what it is you're claiming and why they will no doubt have heard that the airline has gone bust so they will be anticipating communication from you always include a note that you're seeking a refund under section 75 of the consumer credit act as i mentioned before if you've used a debit card and a lot of people do that because the credit card companies often charge an extra additional charge you use a debit card it may be that your bank or debit card issuer has a similar scheme which whilst it's not actually laid down in the law in the same way that it is for a credit card they will actually give you a refund anyway so it minimizes your losses obviously that then leaves you with the problem of booking another flight but our advice as before is to use a credit card to give you this extra protection our next question is from someone who's bought a watch from a local jeweler and he's asked it to be asked for it to be engraved with his wife's name and a happy Christmas message unfortunately when he's gone back to the jeweler to collect the watch he's found there's a notice in the window saying that the company has gone into liquidation and there's a name there of the receivers who are actually handling the closing of the uh, of the, the jeweler company he wants to know what he can do <clears throat> well if the company had actually engraved the watch I understand from the gentleman that he'd had a phone call from him a couple of days earlier to say it was ready to collect so they've actually engraved it then in law the watch is actually assigned to him that means that it's a specific item that's already been put to one side effectively just for him this means that when he gets in touch with the receiver there should be a watch available for him that's been properly um, properly engraved as uh, in, in line with the contract that he actually took out when he paid for the watch before and that's really good because it means that he's going to get the watch that he actually wanted and the watch he's paid for 
Unfortunately, if he'd just been buying in a watch and it wasn't assigned to him because there's nothing unusual or specific about it, he would then become an unsecured creditor of the business. And unfortunately for unsecured creditors, especially people who have paid cash, and if you haven't used your credit card and don't get the extra protection that I mentioned before, if you become an unsecured creditor, it means that you're very unlikely to get anything back. So always use your credit card to give you that extra protection. If you're an unsecured creditor, you should still contact the receiver because that may be that there are enough assets in the business to actually cover most of what the company owes at the time that it went bust. But I'm afraid it is more likely that you probably wouldn't get anything back. So use your credit card and look for the protections that that actually affords you. Our next question is from someone who's bought some Christmas tree lights from a pop-up shop. These are shops that often appear in the month or so before Christmas and they usually trade up until close down time on Christmas Eve. This means that if you've bought something from them and it becomes faulty after Christmas, they're often very, very difficult to trace. In this case, someone's bought a, some lights for their Christmas tree and although they haven't got the Christmas tree up yet, they've actually plugged them in and tried them. What's happened then is that um, other things that have been plugged into the, uh, the circuit in the house have, uh, have all switched off and it's tripped their circuit breaker. So we're instantly concerned that these things might not be safe. So our advice is to contact the Citizens, Citizens Advice Consumer Service on 03 0406 and they'll get straight on to uh, trading standards in Northumberland and tell us about the problem. If the shop's still there, we can go down and buy other items and we'll send them away for test. And when it's an urgent item like this, the test house can usually turn a report round in a week or so. We'd also take the Christmas tree lights off the person who bought them because we want them to be examined at the test house as well. It's very important if you think you've bought something that's unsafe, that you get in touch with us through the consumer, the citizens advice consumer service as soon as you can. We want to be able to take as much action as we can to make sure that goods that are going into people's houses at Christmas are safe. The type of items that we always have concerns about, um, electric items, charges for things like um, pads and mobile phones and computer games, consoles, whatever, whether they're um, the, the type that sit under the television or the handheld consoles, because there have been concerns about the safety of those items in the past. We're also concerned about toys generally, so we always have a close look at items such as uh, cuddly toys, any electrical toys, battery operated toys. There are concerns these days about the security of interactive toys and interactive devices generally that are part of um, a part of the internet, the internet of things as it's become known. So there are lots and lots of concerns. So our advice is always to buy from reputable dealers who are going to be there um, after Christmas. Look for the CE mark on any electrical package because that will tell us that the item should have been tested and that the manufacturer and the importer is actually making a declaration that they believe that the item is safe. We will trace it back through the supply chain if the item isn't safe. We'll talk to the trading standards service where the importers or the manufacturers are based and find out what, act what action, if any, the importer or manufacturer is willing to take. And then we have various powers to order recalls, to suspend items, to prohibit their further sale and so on. So if you've got any safety concerns about goods that you've bought, then please get in touch with us. That number again is 03454040506. We'll come and talk to you, find out what your concerns are, follow the item back down the supply chain and do what we can to make the market safe. We've had an inquiry We've from had an inquiry someone who's from borrowed someone some money borrowed and they don't think the person who's lent them the money is actually doing it legally. This raises all sorts of concerns that we have about loan sharks. If you think you've borrowed money from a loan shark, then the deal is not actually legal in law 
and you don't have to pay them any more and you're entitled to a full refund on the money that you've actually paid out so far. A lot of the problems we have with loan sharks relate to the fact that people will borrow money but they won't get any paperwork as they will do with an absolutely legal deal. So you don't know how much you've paid, you don't know how many payments you've made, you don't know how many payments you still have to pay. And these loan sharks are often charging interest rates up into the several thousand percent. Our advice, if you think you might have borrowed money from a loan shark, is to contact the illegal money lending team. And if you Google the illegal money lending team, you'll see all the contact details on there. They will both help you by investigating the loan shark and cancelling the loan that you've taken out, but they'll also help with advice about things like looking for local credit unions, which is a scheme whereby you'll pay a small amount in, and it's a sort of a community loan scheme. And they'll also help you with deals, uh, any problems that you might have with your bank account. And also they will put you on to people who can give you debt advice, help you to rearrange your debts so that you don't fall into the trap of a loan shark again. So if you think you might have borrowed money from a loan shark, look for the illegal money lending team online and you'll see lots of advice there. If you contact the team, they will do everything they can to help you out of your predicament. Well, I think we've covered an awful lot of ground tonight. I hope you found it useful. I've mentioned the Citizens and Advice Consumer number uh, a couple of times. Again, for those who didn't write it down, it's 03454 06. They'll have lots of advice for you and they'll pass serious problems through to your local trading standards people. We'll also be putting up some links to other sources of advice. Please use them. There's an awful lot of really, really useful advice um, out there and it should help you with any problem. We hope you don't have any problems this Christmas and that your Christmas passes off peacefully and happily with family and friends. So from all of us here at the Council, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And we hope you don't have any problems, but we hope that what you've learned today will help you with anything that does come up.